Hello again. Welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is BGFH, and uh, <clears throat> boy, um, I am back for my first of the E3 2015 videos. It is Sunday evening, about, oh, I don't know, what time is it? 9.30, 10 o'clock right now? Uh, oh, 10.30, never mind. Uh, a little after 10.30 on Sunday night, we uh, just got done watching a whole bunch of stuff, actually, this evening. Um, Bethesda officially kicked off E3, which is why I feel it's only fitting to pop right on back into Brutal Doom, uh, seeing as how the new Doom game was going to be unveiled, and I will definitely talk about that shortly but uh, for some background entertainment uh, I figured let's pop into some doom and uh, we'll just go with that so um, Bethesda that was originally you know what I was gonna watch and I actually completely forgot about I went I went to check Twitter to make sure I knew what time the Bethesda show started and upon doing so, I totally forgot about, but got reminded about the Nintendo World Championship 2015 edition, uh, which also took place this evening. So I thought, you know what? Yeah, they're streaming that. Let's go check it out. And uh, I... I watched it, and overall, I gotta say, I was actually pretty pleased with how things uh, turned out. Um, so I'll talk about Nintendo first, and then we'll jump into all the stuff that I have to try to remember about the Bethesda press conference, uh, or uh, media briefing, whatever, uh, I forget what they even called the event. Showcase. The Bethesda Showcase. So, the Nintendo, this isn't even their E3 uh, pre-show event. This is their Nintendo World Championship. You know, if you remember back in the early 90s, Nintendo had done a Nintendo World Championship. Uh, of course, you have the famous the famous cartridges that you could get. There's like a gray one, there's a gold one. You want to watch a pretty funny video on that watch the angry video game nerd episode he kind of goes into more about what was all in that or you know it talks more about the nintendo world championship and does some pretty funny stuff along the way but uh so yeah um i caught it pretty much right from the beginning i just coincidentally timed my checking twitter right around the time it started so they started out with uh I forget, I don't remember how many people, I'm just going to run through the first few parts, but they start out by showing Splatoon, which is a really cool game they unveiled last year. I did pick it up for the Wii U, although I haven't actually gotten to play it yet, I just haven't had a chance, been doing some other stuff first. Uh, but within the next couple of days I'm hoping to remedy that situation because everything I've seen of it looks a lot of fun. They basically took, like... The concept of an online shooter made it friendly to everyone and made it really fun. I would almost compare it to, uh, like, kind of a third-person action game shooter, but then compare it to, for any Tony Hawk's Pro Skater fans, you remember the graffiti mode? Super, super fun mode. That's what my friends and I would all play back in the day uh, when we played Tony Hawk 3 and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, so Splatoon, they did some rounds of that, and that was pretty good. Uh, then they did some, basically they had, like, the regular matches, and then they had the, what they call it, the underground, where if you lose, you could do, like, some extra harder challenges to try to get back in. Uh, and not to be totally eliminated. And those were pretty entertaining. Um, they did, let's see, the first one was... The Legend of Zelda, I believe. 
The second one was Super Metroid. That was pretty entertaining, actually. And then the third one was Balloon Fight. That one was, meh, I don't know. I just, I've never, ow. I've never really gotten into Balloon Fight. It's, you know, kind of an interesting concept, but just a game that I never really got into. Um, so then, you know, like I said, they went to, uh, they did, for the main matches, you started out with, like I said, Splatoon. Uh, then he went to Mario Kart 8, which is a blast. I would definitely cover that game if I could cover consoles. Uh, I don't have the proper hardware to do so, as I've mentioned before, so can't really do that just yet. But uh, they released, they announced, I think it was uh, during a Nintendo Direct earlier this year, they added a 200cc mode, which until then, all the Mario Kart games basically had 50, 100, and 150 cc's for speed and difficulty. Well, let's put it this way. Uh, 200 cc's is stupid fast. <laughs> some ma some maps or some tracks, it almost seems like you're playing F-Zero. Uh, I mean, it is just ludicrously fast. Uh, so they did that. Uh, what was the third main event? Um, what was their third main event? I can't even remember. Uh, no, I'm drawing a blank. I mean, it was... Oh, they had Smash Brothers. That was the one. Yeah, see, I really... You know, the thing with uh, Super Smash Brothers, it's a cool idea. I do have a couple of the games. I have the... Uh, I have the Wii version. Actually, I think that is the only one I have. I don't have the GameCube version anymore. Um... The problem that I have with Smash Brothers, that is a perfect example of a game I would like to enjoy, but as a low vision gamer, it is tough because you're playing on all of these platforms, uh, partially in 2D, partially in 3D, depends on how the how the worlds uh, work, you know, it, it kind of switches between, oh geez, depending on how things are, and the problem is the action zooms so far out and there's just chaos going on everywhere, like constantly, so I actually find it quite difficult for me to play. Um, I like some of the... the reason I got the Wii version uh, was because they added a nice little single player kind of adventure mode, and I was, which was like a 2D platformer and then some Smash Brothers regular fights in general. Um, and that was okay, but yeah, I didn't even get the Wii U version because I just... It's, like I said, it's really tough if you're a low-vision gamer. I mean, it zooms out so far in some cases just so it can keep track of all the characters that you are, you know, that's on the, that's on the level that it's really tough. So, I, you know, that was the one part of the Nintendo World Championship that I really didn't care for all that much. I mean, I totally get it. I'm not discounting it. Like, if you like Smash Brothers, hey, great, more power to you. Um... I just don't get as much out of that game. However, <laughs> I hope they archive the Nintendo World Championship. I hope you can watch the replay or watch the event. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube somewhere, if not on Nintendo's own website eventually. What really redeemed that thing, though, was holy crap. Remember last year I talked about that Nintendo unveiled their Mario Maker for the Wii U? And it's going to be coming out, I'm not exactly sure when, but this year at some point. Well, they, um... Oh, before we get to Mario Maker, there was one game. They did do an unveil uh, for one of the games there, and I... Oh, I... oh man, I just went totally stupid. I had it a second ago. Uh, there's a 3DS game that they had to play. And it was actually kind of cool looking. I hope they do a Wii U version. Um... Battle Ball, I think it was called, something like that. And basically, it's kind of like a first person. You're in these like mechs, and you're trying to get. It's kind of like mech soccer. You're like shooting it, shooting the ball. You can do like regular shots. You can do like charge shots. Uh, if you hit people with the ball, it hurts them. You know, they can eject out of their mech if they get damaged too much. If you get a goal. Um, would, you know, if you get a goal, it's interesting because the, 
Then, for the next, in order to get the next one, the goal actually shrinks, so it's a lot harder to gain subsequent goals in the game. So they kind of just did an overview of that. That was kind of neat. Um, I think with a small screen again, that could be something where <coughs> might be a little bit of an issue for me. So I would potentially like to see a Wii U version of that franchise. Um, but yeah, that was cool. But <laughs> if and when, watch my Twitter feed because if they do archive it, I will definitely post the link on my Twitter feed. What made the Nintendo World Championship was the Grand Finals. That was freaking awesome. They took Mario Maker, so some of their Nintendo Treehouse staff um, created, they created, was it, four levels. And the, when it, they whittled it down to two, the final two people, and each person, they basically, the, for the first three, they took turns and then like one person would play, the other person would be kind of blindfolded and they couldn't tell what was going on and then they kind of alternated. Uh, and then the final one, they actually played together. Uh, at the same time, they kind of did a race, but the catch was, depending on how well they did in the first matches, they... Um, they got a lead, so one guy had like a 15 second head start because he did better on the first three matches. But man, let me tell you, watch, if you don't watch the whole archive, if they have it somewhere, watch the finals of the Nintendo World Championship. That was just freaking bananas, man. Um, Mario Maker, especially if they get the sharing component down, that's the one thing I'm still a little bit scared of, is how we're going to go to get these levels from people. But holy crap, let me tell you, um, judging by what the guys at Nintendo made in-house, in Treehouse, based on that, um, this game is going to be absolutely insane. Basically, think of, you know, if you were obsessed with Super Mario Brothers, 1, 2, 3, Mario World, New Super Mario Brothers, whatever, any of these games, and you wanted to make your own levels, but you wanted to make them just absolutely ridiculous. You know, there's several Super Mario Brothers mods out there. There's, like, ones that make, like, impossible levels. There's one, I think, called, like, Unfair Mario. There's, like, a... There is a PC Mario creator thing that I saw at one point. I just never really actually gotten to look into it. But, um... Man, these these levels. So what they did is they started off with like a Mario 1 level, they did a Mario 3 level, they did a Super Mario World level, and then they did a new Super Mario Brothers level. And like I said, this was just ridiculous. Um, these are not like regular Mario levels. These are like... Take what you know about all the elements from any of these Super Mario Brothers games and then amplify everything up to like 12, maybe even 13. Ah oh, hell, we'll just go 15. I mean, there's stuff everywhere. I mean, there there was, what was there, like a Hammer Brother riding a bomb. bomb uh, There were just ginorm, like if you, if a mushroom touched an enemy, you could instantly make large enemies like you could find in Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, I, I'm not even. I'm not even going to talk more about it. I'm not even really going to spoil it. But I mean, it, like, each one was entertaining. Like the original Super Mario Brothers, Mario Three. Some of the crap that they had you do, and even those levels. I'm like, I don't even think I could beat them. Like, I used to be pretty good at Super Mario Brothers games. I I was pretty good at Mario Three. But nowadays, I would suck. <sighs> But it was super enter entertaining to watch. I mean, people were just freaking out. They're like, what on earth are you guys? <laughs> like, you guys are sadistic bastards, basically. Um, and like I said, judging by just what they made in those uh, in-house, I can only imagine the horrors that actual users will create once they get a ha their hands on Mario Maker. Um, it's going to be one of those that I'll probably play a bit, but I'll end up probably watching it on YouTube quite a bit just because, like, I will suck so bad at probably the vast majority of content that people will create. I mean, some people will create fun levels, but some people, like I said, 
I, I hope they have, I hope you can kind of rank things, like if you share them. I hope that you can rank them and say, okay, this is like a, you know, average level, this is like a fun level. You know, have different categories for like actually playable and then just sadistic torture. Um, if you could kind of sift through them that way, that would be really good. Um, I'm sure we'll hear more about that at Tuesday's Nintendo Digital event like they did last year. Um, curious to see what more they say about it. I'm sure we'll get a release date for it. But yeah, um, Mario Maker. Holy crap. Um, oh, one, one other thing I can just say just to give you guys a nice taste. Giant Karibo Shoe. Yeah, it gets freaking nuts. So, watch my Twitter feed at BGFH79. If I find or when I find a way to watch it archived, so if you missed it, um, I will definitely post a link. If you don't watch the whole competition, do yourself a favor and watch the um, watch the Mario Maker finals because it was just ridiculous insanity. That's about all I can really describe it as. Uh, it really entertaining. So. What I was originally going to talk about um, is Bethesda, for the first time, they have they decided they were going to have their own press conference. Yeah, typically you have Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and then you have a couple of the major developers like Square, uh, Ubisoft, EA, and uh, that might be all. But uh, no, um, Bethesda kicked off the show, and I think they did a pretty good job. So, they started by basically by talking about the game that I was, well, one of the two games that I was really most in, interested in. That being a, the new version of what I'm playing right now, Doom. We knew it was coming, we knew they were working on it, and we, you know, other than that, like, Three second, three nanosecond teaser trailer that they showed about a three, four weeks ago, month ago. Yeah, they did show off Doom, and it's hitting a lot of the right notes. Um, I will say right off the bat that I thought the movement speed, maybe like the character running speed, maybe they were just playing that way in the demo. But it kind of seemed like the running speed was a little bit slower than I expected based on what they were talking about. That said, um, it basically looks like, I mean, they're using their id Tech sec, uh, 6 engine, which is kind of their new and improved, uh, like, they had id Tech 5 for Rage, which I haven't covered on the channel yet, but they did that, and, um, yeah, I mean, this definitely seems like it's going to be a lot more, like, Doom 3, you know, I showed you that, uh, the, re the, was it the la Lost Mission? The Lost or Last Mission, whatever the heck it was called. That was pretty action-packed, but a lot of the... Like, a lot of Doom 3, they kind of missed the mark on it because, yeah, they had great tech, they had great lighting. Um, you know, back then, the graphics were amazing for Doom 3, but it kind of lost a lot of what made the original Doom 1 and 2 freaking awesome. Uh... You know, what we're playing right now, there's guys everywhere, you know? Um, there's just guys freaking everywhere. It's super action heavy. Um, they still have the mood, you know, the moody lighting, you know, I like get into those dark areas where the lights are flickering on and off, all that kind of stuff. But... Doom 3 just kind of, you know, slowed things down a little bit. I mean, which was cool in its own way, but it didn't feel like Doom. Um, they're not calling it Doom 4. They're just calling it Doom. And they showed... Oh, I don't know. They, they probably spent, what, 15, 20 minutes on it? So they showed some single-player stuff, and that looked pretty good. You uh, are, A lot of your weapons are coming back. You get the shotgun, the super shotgun, of course. You can't have... A Doom without that. I mean, Doom, like I said in earlier videos, Doom's shotgun and super shotgun are some of the best, I would say, if not the best shotguns in any video game, in any shooter ever. Uh, there's a couple that come close. Half-Life's was pretty good. Fears was pretty excellent. Fear 1, I mean. 
Uh, that was pretty excellent, but oh, the, the, the range that you have on the Doom shotgun. Like, I can shoot somebody clear across the level and it still has punch. This gun is just epic. Uh, especially when you get the super shotgun variety. Um, but yeah, they showed some single player. Then they showed some multiplayer. Uh, we're def they're definitely going to have some multiplayer in Doom, of course. Deathmatch, of course, and other game modes. And why didn't you open? Let's try that again. Why? What the hell? I'm trying to get my... I want to get my mega health. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Um, then they, then they actually talked about what's really kind of cool, and I hope that it's, it seems like it'd be fairly user-friendly. Um, you know, Doom really started, I talked about this in my Let's Play videos and stuff like that, but it was really famous for not only just starting Deathmatch, and online multiplayer was a thing, but... People, I mean, people still to this day make Doom mods. And, yeah, I mean, it's still really good. People still make mods for this. So what they said is, like, we want everybody to make content for Doom. So they took basically what uh, Bungie did with Halo, the Halo series with their Forge, and they... Basically, you can make it like you can be in a level, and you can uh, make it for, like an overhead view. It looked like it looked like you could actually modify things in first person too. I'm not exactly quite sure how the ed editor will work, but it's basically just um, you know just snap the pieces down and go. You can make prefab unit uh, blocks, or you can build stuff on your own. Um, and I can't remember what the name of the something snap. I'm trying to remember what terminology they use, what they called it. Um, map snap, I think it was called, something like that. So, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm not going to be. I'm trying to remember as much as I possibly can. I mean, they, there's. I can only imagine tomorrow and Tuesday, especially tomorrow when there are just so many more press conferences to talk about at the end of the day. But uh, I mean, so Doom is pretty impressive. Uh, then they talked, uh, then Bethesda, they talked about Dishonored. Uh, I have not covered Dishonored on the channel yet. Um, there, there's just so many games to cover. I mean, if you've seen my Steam library, like, that's why I'm not super concerned about, I mean, yes, I would like to cover console stuff, but I have so many freaking Steam games, you guys, and look, these are not, I don't get these games for free. I'm not one of these, you know, large YouTube channels that you know, gets paid or gets free games so that they're promoted on. A, uh, a company will give me games to promote them. Every game that, every game and every piece of hardware that I've covered on the channel, I have purchased for myself. I've either purchased it or maybe there's been one or two games maybe that Jawbreaker has gifted to me or a friend might have gifted to me, but those are actually few and far between. Usually it's just a, a really watching Steam sales, or it's a free game, or a free mod, or whatever. But uh, this is all me, you know? I'm just a one-man operation, working with the tools that I have, and that's what I'm covering. So, you know, there's so many things on the PC that I could cover um, that I'm just not worried. But uh, well, the reason I mention that is because, like I said, Dishonored, there are so many games that I haven't covered on the channel that I could spotlight in some fashion at some point, and I probably will at some point. Um, you know, you, you kind of have to like balance between like, well, you want to cover new stuff as it comes out if you're playing it. Um, you know, if you cover old things, is it, you know, is it retro enough, or will people watch it? Or it's just like, oh, that game came out a year and a half ago, who cares? You know, it just depends on your audience. So I'm still trying to work some of that out. And if it's something I really like or really want to play, I'm going to play it and I'm going to cover it. <laughs> yeah, so um, they announced Dishonored 2. 
they really didn't show any gameplay per se. I mean, you could tell that like conceptually, you could there were little snippets of what could be game in-game footage. Like they'll be running or you know doing some parkour or they said they did a they had a area where he was using a grappling hook, using some pretty cool weaponry. Uh, Dishonored was this kind of you could play it as a stealth or an action game. You really were encouraged to play it as uh, stealth, but you had the freedom. You know, if shit started going really badly, you could just start wrecking stuff. So that was good. Um, so they didn't spend too much time on that. Um, then they showed uh, even less of. They showed a game called Battle Cry. Now I don't know a lot about this game. Um, Battle Cry is a title that they. I don't remember if they announced it like a year ago or two years ago. But we really haven't. At least I don't remember seeing much of it. So I, before tonight, I really don't know. And um, they really didn't, like I said, they may have spent five minutes on it, if that. Um, hey, buddy, you want to stop shooting me for a sec while I reload? Cool. All right. Hey, uh, your buddy up there. There we go. Kill that guy. Um, yeah, Battle Cry. So that kind of seems like a mostly third-person action game. Uh, a lot focus on melee. There's a lot of focus on melee. There definitely are some ranged weapons, but it seems to be a free-to-play type game. And uh, you can, like I said, it's largely, I think, third-person. And it's melee-focused, but you can sign up online for the beta or, or uh, early beta access if you can get in. I tried loading the website earlier, but uh, it, it must just be getting hammered right now with all the oh crap with all the traffic. So I was not able to yet apply to try to get in. Um, it's BattleCryTheGame.com, I believe, is where you go to sign up for the uh, Early Access Beta, and uh, that game will be coming out later this year. Again, I don't, I can't really talk about it much because I really haven't played it. Or I really, they really didn't talk about it a whole lot. It looks action-y, it looks kind of bloody. Um, that was kind of the theme, I mean, even up front, you know, the, the main uh, presenter at Bethesda, like, yeah, basically, um, we're starting off E3, and it's going to be bloody. It's going to be, you know, pretty crazy. So that's kind of a lot of what they were showing today. You know, you got Doom, which was actually really bloody. They kind of took up... Seems like they took some nice inspiration from things like Brutal Doom, and, uh, you know, they showed, like, the BFG. Well, they didn't show... Well, they showed it at the very, very end. But they showed most of, like, the rockets and the shotguns, the minigun, the plasma gun, all that kind of stuff and uh, the chainsaw, and yeah, they were just, blood was everywhere, you know, bodies were flying apart, um, yeah, should be fun. Um, oh, let's see, so they did Dishonored, uh, I talked about, I talked about, um, Battle Cry, uh, before we get to the big one, I'm trying to remember, I know I'm gonna, I know, I know I'm going to do something stupid and forget some game um, before I get to the main event here. Um, I think that was mainly the, it. Uh, the main covers are the main games that they covered. Um, yeah, they spent a bit of time on Doom. Which was great, because that was one I was really hyped to see. And of course, the other game that everybody came out to see, uh, they released the trailer about a week ago, Fallout 4. Yes, we are getting a Fallout 4. Yes, it is going to be first person, or third person, I guess, as we found out tonight. 
And yes, it is coming out this year. November 10th, as a matter of fact. And man, they, they, they probably spent a good half hour or better going through just some of the things. Like they didn't show a full walkthrough of like a mission or anything. Um, but they show, I mean, really for such a huge open world kind of game, I think he did a, I think that they did a, a really a good a job as you could do trying to show what makes a game like that cool. So you can play as a male or a female character. Uh, they seem to be voiced. You can, of course, create your own character. They kind of emphasize that, hey, you can do all this stuff on the fly. You don't have sliders. You just kind of sculpt the face. You're like looking in a mirror with your wife and whatever. And uh, you have a kid, I guess. And um, that whole process seemed pretty cool. You actually start the game right before the war, or before the nuclear fallout. So that was pretty cool. And then you wake up, was it 200 years after the Fallout thing? So it's probably not quite as radiated anymore. You know, it's been a little while. Um, so one of the things that I definitely appreciate is that even in the trailer I noticed that things seem to be a little more colorful this time around. I mean, there's so many games, and I totally understand why Fallout 3 and New Vegas were this way. Ow. Uh, you know, but they were just really, really brown, really drab-looking games. Even the sky is just all radiated. And I get that. But when 95% of the shooters and action games, the AAA games in general, seem to be... How many shades of uh, brown and gray can we show? You know, we're going to show our new engine, and it's going to show so many shades of gray, you won't even understand. 50 shades of gray... That's nothing. No, man. <laughs> okay, stupid joke aside. Um, so, the game just looks a lot more colorful. Um, you can play it in third person, first person, like I already said. Um, you can... Apparently, there, there's, there's, there's so much to this game. Like Now, if you want to, you can break down items in the world and build a base so like almost kind of like a I wouldn't say Minecraft but um, you know it just looks, looks like oh, okay well let's uh, we can build our bases and then like once you build a big enough one people will come and move in uh, tradesmen will come by and try to sell you stuff and you can get good weapons that way um, you have to build defenses so that you know when bandits come by and they try to raid you you can hold them off or defend them off, or your people can defend them off while you are exploring the wasteland. Um, and in the trailer they showed the dog, and yes, you do get a dog, which is really kind of cool. I hope that he stays with you and like it's that he his AI is doing all really good and you don't lose him. They had a dog in Fallout 3, but it wasn't really that effective because like, it was kind of easy to lose him, and then you just wouldn't find him again. So I hope they have, like, a way where you can just call him to you or something if you're separated. Kind of like how... Oh, what game was I playing not too long ago where... Oh, The Witcher! Where you could just call your horse, whistle your horse, and... He would just come. He would just come. I like that. Um, especially since your dog can be part of gameplay. Like, you can point at stuff... And, like, if you point at an enemy somewhere, he'll attack. If you point at um, an item, you can tell him to pick it up. That was pretty cool. Um, so that could be handy. You know, you're, there's a bunch of dudes. You need some ammo or you need some food for your health or whatever. Uh, yeah, you can have your dog help out in battle, maybe get you some supplies. Um, sounds a pretty good deal to me. So, you have that. You have ridiculous amounts of being able to customize your weaponry, your armor. I mean, they were just kind of doing this really quick demo of, like, change this little rifle, this little gun that you get into, just this absolutely crazy 
multiple barrel monstrosity gun. Like you can have, I forget how many weapon types they said there were, but then on top of that you have like a, an obscene amount of different types of mods and add-ons and things that you could do. So that was pretty sweet. Um, you know, they showed some of the, some of a couple of the areas. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it's just one of those things you kind of have to watch. Like, people like the Elder Scrolls games and the Fallout games for different reasons. You know, some people really like to dig into the story. Some people just like the, you know, finding caves and ruins and uh, abandoned buildings in Fallout's case. Uh, you know, and just seeing what kind of loot they can get. Um, all of those things are totally valid. I like a little bit of everything, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, I should briefly mention they did talk about some extra content for the Elder Scrolls Online. I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to that because... <sighs> I mean, I love the Elder Scrolls series, but I just... I An Elder Scrolls MMO... MMOs in general, I just... They don't do it for me, you know? I mean, partially because the way that a typical MMO is, as far as gameplay is concerned, it's just not that engaging to me. Like, I, I could really care less about hitting, you know, just doing, hitting a button, waiting for a cooldown bar. Um, I know that they're a little bit more active than that as far as, like, the Elder Scrolls, but... Since there isn't, I don't think there's a monthly fee for Elder Scrolls Online now. Um, when the core game goes on sale, maybe maybe I'll check it out. But I'm not in any rush to do so. Uh, but that said, Fallout 4 looks really good. Um, I'm sure I'm missing little tidbits that they talked about, but, you know, like the, they, they showed the conversation system, they showed the crafting system, the base building, they did kind of a, they did a little reel of different combat, um, the VATS system is returning from Fallout 3 in New Vegas, where it was like, you could play it as a first person shooter, but a lot of times it was more advantageous to go into this like slow-mo time where you were actually trying to uh, you would lock on to an enemy and you would lock on to a different, like a, a body part of an enemy. You'd be showing percentages of how likely you were to destroy that limb or how likely you were to hit that body part. And if you had certain perks, like the bloody mess perk, classic one, um, you could just totally screw guys up when you got a good, powerful weapon, got a few perks, and, uh, yeah, a lot of fun. So, I kind of did a mixture of the main kind of action first person y thing <clears throat> and the slowing things down in Fallout 3. It was almost, like I said, it was more advantageous to do that in 3 just because of the way the engine worked and the way the gameplay kind of worked. So, um, I think that you, if you want to play it more as like a traditional FPS or a third person shooter, I think you can do that. It looks like they're trying to open that up more, you know, since they talked about, hey, you play it as a first person, third person shooter, whatever you want. Um, so that's totally fine. Uh, we'll just have to see when the full game comes out. Uh, they did announce a special edition, or a collector's edition, and I kind of wonder about... I kind of wonder what the... If I get it through Steam, can I get can I get the digital version and still have them ship? Oh my God! I just got murdered. Uh, okay. Well, we're gonna wrap up the video here fairly shortly. Here, anyway, we're almost done. Uh, so we're gonna. We're going to go out with a bang, throw in some cheat codes, and just cause some a lot of carnage as we finish wrapping up the Bethesda conference. So, um, I can't even remember what I was talking about now. I totally, because I died, I totally lost track of what, I, what part of what I was actually talking about. Um, boy. 
that really stinks. Um, I totally apologize, you guys. Uh, that's what dying in a game will do for you. You know, you're talking about a topic and all of a sudden you don't remember what the heck you were talking about anymore. Um, just give me a minute. Uh, enjoy some final carnage here as we continue. Actually, we're not going to go in there yet. Let's go up here. Because i got to do that. Fallout, Fallout, Fallout. What in the world is he talking about? I know I was talking about like, the different gameplay systems and things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully I was pretty much done with my thought. I, you know, if I leave something out or I just totally spaced out of the train of thought that I was doing, uh, like I said, again, I apologize. Um, I just totally blew it. I lost my train of thought. So... Um, they announced, they did announce, also, in addition to Fallout 4, there is, and it's actually out as of tonight, on iOS. They partnered with Apple, and there is an iOS Fallout game. They designed it for the touchscreen. It is totally free. They said it's not free to play. You don't have to, you know, they made it a point to say, no, we're not going to be one of those stupid games that charges you for uh, charges you for your uh, like you know oh you gotta pay money to unlock more items or you gotta wait 15 hours to unlock something if you build something boom nope um, <clears throat> you're good you're fine so that is out tonight uh, you can go look that up right now I'll probably take a look at it but I am not as excited as you think I would be because it, they showed a little bit of the interface off and there's a lot of text you know there's a lot of if you looked at some of the like if you looked at FTL or XCOM when you're in the base mode a lot of it kind of reminds me of that where there's like these little rooms and you got all these little vault people in there I love the idea, and I would like to be able to play it, but I just have a feeling that b between all the, like, little text and meters and things, I mean, unless I'm playing this... Um, now, one thing, one way I could see myself maybe trying it is if Apple would actually announce their new Apple TV that everyone's been rumoring for a while that is supposed to have its own app store, uh, if I could, you know, basically... I suppose I could airplay it. Um, I, you know, I didn't even think of that. I suppose I could try airplaying it from the iPad onto my Apple TV and try to play things that way. Maybe I could play it that way. I guess that would be something I could experiment with. Um, so they're really going all out on this uh, Fallout thing. Um, you know, Fallout 4, they got the mobile game. Um... Speaking of mobile, they also announced they didn't show any gameplay. They just showed this kind of conceptual, like, cinematic trailer for a Elder Scrolls collectible card game. So there is that coming out at some point, uh, theoretically later this year. But Fallout is really Fallout 4 is really the main draw of the conference, aside from Doom. Sad to say that Doom is not coming out until early next year. I was really hoping that that would be a 2015 game because I figured... I honestly figured that that one would come out before Fallout 4 because, you know, Doom is not an open world game. Doom is a more straightforward, here's a level, blow shit up. You know, that's what kind of game Doom generally is. Um, but no, Doom is coming out next year, 2016. And uh, I'm there is supposed to be some kind of a beta. I'm guessing it'll be a multiplayer beta if I had to if I had to make a guess. Um, and because I pre-ordered Wolfenstein last year, they said, hey, if you do this, 
you will get access to the Doom beta when it comes out. So, when that happens, I will assuredly be downloading that and uh, definitely playing it and more than likely covering it on the channel in some form or another. So I don't know, maybe the beta will come out later this year, maybe early next year. I don't know how all that's going to work. And other than, I, this is really freaking dark. That's hard to see. Um, that is kind of the Bethesda show. Overall, I think they did a really good job. Uh, Doom looked like it could definitely be interesting. you got the level creator, you've got single player, you've got multiplayer. Uh, I should also mention, not only is it, is it a, just a level editor, but you can actually code your AI. So, like, if you want to make a, like, a tower defense mode, or not like a tower defense, but like a wave-based survival, you want to do a co-op game, you want to do a single player, you want to do, like, a multiplayer variant of some kind of a, you know, multiplayer game, you can, apparently. Uh, you can kind of make your custom game modes, make your path for your AI or your AI behavior, um, but it's all supposed to be in this kind of like, you know, real-time, easy-to-use grid or like, you know, level builder thing where like, you know, you don't have code to do it. Uh, you know, anybody, they're wanting anyone to be able to, to do this. So, Doom looks good. Dishonored, um, that will, at the very, at the earliest, that'll be a next year game. Late next year, if I had to guess. Um, Battle Cry, I don't know. That could be up in the air. I don't foresee myself, I mean, I could be totally wrong. It could be pretty awesome. If I can get in, I will maybe give the beta a shot, or the alpha, whatever it is. If, uh... And if not, I'll just play it when it comes out for free. Maybe give it a shot and see what it's like. Uh, Elder Scrolls Online, honestly, unfortunately, I really don't care. Um, maybe I'll check out at some point if I get a really deep discount on the core game. Collectible card game, again, that could be a thing where I might like it if I can see a little bit better, but depending on how that works, that could be also a visual issue. That's why I haven't even really tried things like Hearthstone. You know, potentially they could make them, like, voiceover accessible, but I don't know that they will. Uh, Fallout 4, coming November this year. Super looking forward to that. Um... I will definitely get. Oh, that's what I was gonna. That's what I was talking about when I couldn't remember earlier. Yes. Yeah, so I said they were creating a um, a special edition, and I was wondering if the PC version of it would allow me to get the special edition, which contains a physical item. So what they're doing is they are, you know. <clears throat> Fallout has always had this, uh, what they call a pit boy, and it is kind of like your little portable computer that where you that you manage your items, your your stats, your level up stuff, all that kind of you know character management esque stuff. Uh, you handle through your pit boy, and uh, they made kind of this little. They made a one for Fallout 3. I never got that one, um, but they are uh, making for the special edition for Fallout 4 where it's kind of the pit boy and I don't know if there is any buttons on it really or if they do anything but essentially you can slide your phone into it and you download an app for Android or iOS and then you can basically communicate with your game so like instead of using you know instead of pausing the game going into your little PDA-esque inter interface right on your main screen um, you could theoretically have on your second screen, like you could put your phone in there and then have that, like maybe, you know, just queue up and on, and on the touch screen, manage your interface that way. So you could manage your, you could look at your map, you could um, change your weapons or, you know, do little upgrades or whatever it is that you wanted to do. All that kind of stuff um, that you would normally do just as a, when you pause the game and enter that interface in the main game, you can also do with the app. Now, I probably wouldn't use the app that way, 
just for the fact, again, that I highly, highly, highly doubt that any of that interface for the app is going to be accessible to a voiceover user. And if I'm doing that on the phone, I would highly suspect that those menus and those text items are going to be fairly small. Nevertheless, depending on how expensive it is, like, just having that kind of a cool, you know, pit boy gadget, um, I probably won't get it, but depending on, you know, what, like I said, what the price is, how all that works, like, it would just be kind of a cool collector's item thing to have, you know, that's another one of those geek loot spotlights I could do, um, you know, if I got one of those things. Not sure that I will, but it's cool for, you know, there's a lot of hardcore Fallout fans, and uh, it's a kind of a neat little special edition. So they're really actually working hard on, you know, not only having that portable uh, or the mobile standalone game for Fallout, but also having the app that integrates with the main game, whether you're playing on the Xbox One, PS4, or the PC. So all that stuff is very cool. Uh, I really like that a lot. Um, with that, I think we've pretty much covered the Bethesda show, and I think that pretty much wraps up E3 Day Zero, or E3 Night Zero, I don't know, I mean, I think, because the show doesn't start till like, Wednesday, um, but you have tomorrow and Tuesday your press conference days, so, you know, a lot of people refer to tomorrow as Day Zero. But uh, you know, we got today, the first time we had a Sunday night conference. And uh, yeah, with the Nintendo World Championship and Bethesda, I think we had a pretty strong opening to E3. Some great games to look forward to. I definitely want to play Doom. I'm definitely going to play probably pre-order Fallout. I just don't know when I'm going to be able to. Like, as big as that game seems, I don't know when I'm going to be able to, like, take like six months off of work just to play that game because it looks so freaking huge. Um, I haven't even played The Witcher. That game is immense as well. And I don't know when I'm going to be able to get get to all of that either. <sighs> so yeah, I mean, there's a lot of big open games this year. I just, I love them. I love to play them. I just am really wondering how I'm going to find time to develop or to devote enough attention to these sorts of games. So, yeah, that is my thoughts on the first night of E3. I will try to come back tomorrow and talk about what I thought of tomorrow's events. Like I said, I actually took tomorrow and Tuesday off of work because I'm like, you know what, I need a break from work anyway. Uh, Orange is the New Black came out this weekend, this third season, I wanted to catch up on that. I knew E3 was coming up. Uh, I really, you know, when I'm at work and I know the press conferences are there, like, I know I want to keep up on Twitter or I would love to live stream them, you know, but I'm at work, so I really can't. So I decided, you know what, screw it, let's take these two days off and enjoy. So tomorrow we've got Microsoft in the morning. I believe we've got uh, Ubisoft and EA. And I think there's a PC event. And I don't remember when that is. I'll double check when that is. There's that. Um, and then Sony in the evening tomorrow. So, you know, if, if it was hard to try to keep up and remember everything just for this evening's events, tomorrow's going to be even crazier. So, uh, we'll see what kind of interesting game announcements come out of that. And then we have Nintendo, and I don't know if we have any other ones on Tuesday or not, but uh, Nintendo should be an interesting show as well. So, the next couple of days, that's kind of what you have to look forward to. I will try to do a video for tomorrow night. Might not get uploaded until Tuesday morning or even record it until Tuesday morning, depending on what time everything ends. But uh, we'll see. And then uh, I'll do one for the two, for Nintendo's event, and uh, we'll call it. So I'm not there at E3, but uh, it's they've made it really easy to tune in and uh, 
watch the shows from home, which is really great. Everybody's doing that now with Twitch and YouTube and live streaming and technology is a wonderful thing. Let's put it that way. The internet is a wonderful thing. So with that, I think we're going to wrap this video up here. It's been pretty long, but uh, I will upload it probably right now. So uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Follow me again on Twitter at BGFH79. Like and subscribe. We just hit 250 subscribers on the channel, which is pretty awesome. And until next time, I will talk to you guys again later.